Right, so I'm a firm believer in something I'm beginning to think of as jam jar science. That is, you can do really interesting things in a jam jar. Now, one of the most interesting things kicking around at the moment is graphene. It's um, a thin layer of graphite, and it's very exciting to people because it has really unusual properties. Um, I'm particularly interested in it because I'm looking at the electroconductivity, and I'm hoping to make an ink out of it. So what I thought I'd do is give it a go, synthesizing some graphene. Now what you're going to need to do this is seven things. First thing is you need a bit of deionized water, which we've got there, you can buy that absolutely anywhere. Uh, supermarkets do sell stores and car stores. The next thing you're going to need is something called spirit of salts, which is hydrochloric acid. You get that in a do-yourself store. The next thing you're going to need is some drain cleaner. That's 98% concentrated sulfuric acid. Again, you can get that in a hardware store. You're going to need some hydrogen peroxide, that's 9%. I've got that from the local chemists. You're going to need some nitrate of soda. This is a fertilizer, you can get it from the garden center. You're going to need some potassium permanganate. I've got this um, free, actually, but you can buy this stuff in little glass, down glass jars down your local chemists. And the next thing you need is some graphite. I bought this graphite online because I've been doing quite a bit of graphite research. Now, making um, graphene is uh, a process that involves three stages. There's a low temperature stage, a mid temperature stage, and a high temperature stage. And the idea is to first of all oxidize the graphite into graphite oxide. And the graphite oxide is easier to split apart than um, graphite itself. So you oxidize it, then you split it apart, filter it, wash it, dry it, and that's graphite oxide that you get. You then dissolve that in water, and graphite oxide dissolves in water, it's hydrophilic, and what you're left with is a graphene oxide or a single layer sheet suspension in water. You can then paint that onto something or drop cast it or something like that, let it dry, and you get a single layer of graphene oxide. What you need to do then is turn that graphene oxide into graphene, and the way you do that is reduce it. There's a couple of methods that I've come across reducing it, and we'll look at that later. The first thing to do is to synthesize some graphene oxide, and that's what we're going to try and do. Now, in the low temperature phase, you have to keep the temperature below 5 degrees. And the way to do that is a little setup like this. I'm using its celebrations. Tim. Okay, that's set on top of my stirrer, the one I made in the previous video. And in there is 115 millilitres of concentrated sulfuric acid. So you pop that in the ice bath. Drop in your stirrer rod. And turn it on. of potassium permanganate. These are the purple crystals you can get at the local chemists. Now you need to add your 15 grams over an hour. And the reason for that is to keep the temperature of the reaction down. If you boil it all in, it's going to get very hot and spoil everything. So you put a little bit in and keep stirring as it's stirring. Put another little bit in, put a little bit in, a bit in, over an hour. Now 15 grams over an hour is about one gram every three minutes. So it's not very much. Okay, so you stick a little bit in, leave it to stir, stick a little bit in, leave it to stir, and so on. And you do that for an hour. Once all your uh, potassium permanganate is in there, you leave it stirring for another hour. So it's going to stir for two hours. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that making this stuff uses some pretty strong acids and some pretty strong oxidizers. Um, sodium nitrate and potassium permanganate are pretty strong oxidizers they use them in rocket fuel. So you need to be uh, very careful with this obviously and it's best to do it outside because it does um, give off gas as well so you need to do it outside. There is an explosion hazard, it might explode so you also need to watch out for that and take care. So take care, wear glasses, wear gloves, do it outside, and really this is not an experiment for the faint of heart. If, if you're a bit worried about stuff, don't.
can't do it. Okay? However, if you're not that uh, bothered and you've got the spirit of adventure, then by all means, go for it. Um, which is what we're doing here, obviously. So, I'm going to turn this back on. Keep it stirring for the two hours that I said, and over one hour I'm going to add gradually my 15 grams of potassium permanganate. Okay, so this has been stirring for about two hours, in fact it's exactly two hours, and it's gone from a purple colour to this kind of purple-green colour. So the next step is to raise the temperature of this water bath to 45 degrees and stir it for another hour at 45 degrees. Now, it's been kept really cold, so pretty much not much has happened in the reaction. Once I raise it to 45 degrees, it's going to fume like mad. So I'm not going to do it in here, I'm going to cut the whole thing outside and do it outside. Now, the way to raise this temperature to 45 degrees, given that I don't have a temperature bath, is I'm going to um, mix up some hot water and cold water until it's 45 degrees, put it on the stirrer, and then every few minutes test the temperature and keep having a little bit of hot water so that it stays at 45 degrees. Obviously it would be much easier if I had something that would keep it at 45 degrees, but I don't, so that's what I've got to do. So I'm going to go off and do that. So I'd say, the temperature of the bath needs to be 45 degrees, and you keep on stirring it for another hour after that. So after you've done that, it turns into this really thick paste. This brown, incidentally, along the rod there, is the graphene oxide that you're after. And then this thick paste is the reactant after you've heated the water bath to 45 degrees and stirred it for an hour. What we're going to do now is add 230 millilitres of distilled water. And again, it's going to have quite a reaction. 230 millilitres of distilled water in the water bath at 45 degrees and stir it for half an hour. Okay, so once you've done that, it turns this kind of muddy brown colour which is pretty helpful because that's what it's supposed to look like apparently. So you add the um, 230ml of distilled water to it, stir it for half an hour at 45 degrees and it goes this muddy brown. Once you've done that you need to kill the reaction and you kill it by adding 600ml of distilled water with 150ml of hydrogen peroxide added in and that's 90% um, strength hydrogen peroxide. You add that in and that's the end of the reaction. So I'm going to do and go and do that and show you the results. Okay, so here it is. This is after I've added the um, distilled water and 9% hydrogen peroxide. It's got this kind of greeny yellow colour. And this apparently is a suspension of the um, graphite oxide with all the rest of the rubbish in there. So what we now need to do is get that out of there. Now, the thing I was reading was saying filter it. And by looking at it, I don't think I've got a filter paper that's going to do that. I think it's all a bit fine and it's just going to go through the filter paper. So what I might do is um, centrifuge it out, then wash it, and centrifuge it, and wash it. Anyway, I'm going to try both of those and let you know which one works. Okay, so I centrifuged that solution that I had, and um, washed it in hydrochloric acid, a weak solution of hydrochloric acid, centrifuged it again, washed it again, washed it into the ionised water, until I got a precipitate out. Well, that precipitate was a kind of silvery brown, because of unreacted graphite and the graphene oxides we were looking for. So then I put it back into this and added some deionized water, and you can see the result. Now, this golden brown stuff is what we're looking for. That should be graphene oxide in solution, and it certainly looks right. At the moment, I'm just leaving it to set, because you can see it goes this deeper black colour here. Those are larger particles, clearly just precipitating out, and in there will be some unreacted graphite. So, I'll let it settle for a while, till most of it is this golden colour, and then I'll take it away and precipitate it, and then probably reduce it down. But, this is looking really good. This is looking like it's working. So I've left this to settle most of the day, and as it's settled, I've poured it off and thrown away the bottom bit, and poured it off and thrown away the bottom bit, and what I'm left with is this golden brown solution, and this is about, I think it's about 0.2 milligrams per milliliter. Uh, I checked on the chart, really, to see what the colour was. But as you can see, it's still separating. We've got this deeper brown here, and I think this deeper brown are the larger graphene oxide flakes that are going to continue to separate out. So what I want to do is to mix that up in there, so that we don't lose any strength of this solution. And about the only way to do that is to sonicate it. Now sonicating reaction chambers are quite expensive things, so the next project I've got in mind, starting tomorrow, is to build a sonicating reaction chamber. But I thought I'd share this with you now.
before I go any further with it so that you knew where we were. But it looks like we've got successfully graphene oxide. Now once you've got graphene oxide, you're pretty much there because um, you can pin this stuff onto um, glossy paper or plastic, let it dry, paint it, let it dry. And then once you've done that, you've got your thin film of graphene oxide, you can turn it into graphene. And there's two ways of doing it, or two ways that I think uh, a homemaker can do it. One is that um, there's a guy who's been turning graphene oxide into graphene by putting it in a light scribe um, DVD burner. And uh, there's another way a guy has been um, flashing it with a photo flash, and that apparently has been doing it. So we've got this far. What I need to do is evap evaporate that down so that it gets more concentrated. Before I do that, I want to sonicate it. Evaporate it down until it turns a deep brown colour, and then we can paint that on things and either laser scribe it or photo flash it to turn it into actual graphene. But as I say, my next job is to build a sonicator and I wanted to show you where I was at this point. But where I am is graphene oxide in solution.